simple polyrhythmic exercise that you can do either with one hand or two hands. It works on hand coordination and finger independence. You can probably even do it on a tabletop without keys. I showed two examples of it on my Instagram, two against three and three against four. You can hypothetically keep going. You can do three against five, four against five, five against seven. I want to show you first two against three. What you're going to do is take fingers one and two, take care of the groups of two. One, two, one. Fingers three and four, the groups of three. One, two, one. And together, one, two, one, two, one. And hands together. Basically, the left hand is mirroring the right. So how do we figure this out if you're not already familiar with these polyrhythms? And I say familiar with because that's actually an important thing. Eventually, you'll just become familiar with and be able to recognize certain polyrhythmic patterns. So for example, two against three, This, this type of pattern is probably familiar and recognizable for many. Three against four. It has a different kind of sound and a different kind of feel, and you can learn to just memorize this. I want to show you my favorite way of figuring this out, which is at the keyboard, and other methods for more complicated polyrhythmic patterns can be used, and they're all basically the same thing. You're finding the least common multiple between the two numbers and finding the subdivision. So looking at the very simple two against three, the least common multiple is six. So with that, one hand will take care of groups of two, one hand will take care of groups of three. So two, three. Two goes into six three times. So we're gonna assign three notes, three fingers to the left hand. Three goes into six two times. So we're going to use two fingers, two notes for this hand. So what I just did is take these three notes, cycle them outwards starting with the thumb, and take these two notes, cycle them back and forth, there are only two notes, but starting from the thumb. So at first I did it without accents, but then I added in the accents, accenting only the thumbs. And if you were to then omit the other notes that aren't accented, it becomes clear how the two parts come together. Eventually, this rhythm will just be engraved into your listening memory and how you feel it, so you won't have to be thinking about three against two and how they come together. Let's now look at three against four. So three goes into the least common multiple of three and four, 12, four times. So we'll take four notes, four, goes into 12 three times, so three notes. Let's actually put on the metronome so this is clear. So this is on the eighth notes. do this on a tabletop as I mentioned before just using your fingers as a tool to figure out the subdivisions and how the two parts come together as a pianist I like this method because it's tactile and I get to use my fingers and it just helps me understand the rhythm 
For more complicated polyrhythms, for example, five against seven, you run out of fingers in terms of if you just want to remain in this position, you're going to have to cycle through the thumb again to get through the notes. And when that happens, in my opinion, this method is a little more complicated than others. So for that, let's turn to pen and paper. And this is something that I learned from Adam Neely's channel, as well as a few other videos on YouTube. Adam has a great video explaining seven against 11, and he shows how to do that with just pen and paper. So dealing with five against seven, what we're doing is we're writing five numbers left to right, and that is our first row. We're going to repeat this row seven times, so five against seven. So here we are. And to this, we're going to circle following the numbers left to right, and then going down the rows, circle every seven numbers. This represents the subdivisions between five against seven. There are 35 numbers. The least common multiple of five and seven is 35. And you're going to play, snap, or clap each of the number ones and each of the circled numbers. So this will represent the groups of seven. This will represent the groups of five. One, two, three, four, five, 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 one. So that is a very slowed down version of five against seven. But you get the point. So you can use this, which is a much more effective method, in my opinion, for numbers higher than, let's say, three against five or four against five. Now, going back to this exercise, one thing you might consider experimenting with is to add articulation to this. So, for example, let's take one part and play it very legato and take another and play it very staccato. This makes this exercise a lot more difficult and in this way you can really work on finger independence because you're dividing one hand into multiple parts, not just rhythmically but with articulation as well. So try this, let me know what you think, and I'd be curious to know your thoughts in terms of how you like to figure out polyrhythms and what makes the most sense for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.